Hi, I'm Madison Pruitt, and I've gone retired. When I re-entered the United States, I headed to Southern Colorado, where I have a condo. I wanted to stay there and rest up for a few days before I headed back home. I discovered there were some interesting historical sites on my route. The first was a little bighorn battlefield where Custer made his famous last stand. And the second was Fort Laramie. I decided to spend some time at both of these historical sites. I had left the snowy Rockies and was heading into the Great Plains. The scenery was totally different, beautiful but different. These markers indicate the spots where the soldiers under Lieutenant Colonel George Custer of the 7th Cavalry died in the Battle of Little Bighorn. While the officers' bodies could be relocated according to their family wishes, the other soldiers were buried under a monument on top of this hill. In 1868, believing it cheaper to feed than fight the Indians, representatives of the U.S. government signed a treaty at Fort Laramie, Wyoming, with the Lakota, Cheyenne, and other tribes of the Great Plains, by which a large area in eastern Wyoming was designated a permanent Indian reservation. The government promised to protect the Indians against all commission of all deportations by people of the United States. Peace, however, was not to last. In 1874, gold was discovered in the Black Hills, the heart of the new Indian reservation. News of the strike spread quickly, and soon thousands of eager gold seekers swarmed into the region in violation of the Fort Laramie Treaty. The Army tried to keep them out, but to no avail. Efforts to buy the Black Hills from the Indians and thus avoid further confrontation also proved unsuccessful. In growing defiance, the Lakota and Cheyenne left the reservation and resumed raids on settlements and travelers along the fringes of the Indian domain. In December of 1875, the Commissioner of Indian Affairs ordered the tribes to return before January 31st, 1876, or be treated as hostiles by the military force. When the Indians did not comply, the army was called in to enforce the order. While the Cheyenne may have won the Battle of Little Bighorn, they lost the war and were soon restricted to Indian reservations. Fort Laramie started out as a trading post called Fort William, which was built in 1834 by Robert Campbell and William Sublet. In later years, it was expanded and became known as Fort John. In 1849, the U.S. Army bought Fort John as part of a plan to establish a military presence along the immigrant trails, Officially renamed Fort Laramie, it served as a military post for the next four decades, 
Soon after arrival, the Army constructed new officers' and soldiers' quarters, stables, a bakery, a guardhouse, powder magazine to house and support the garrison. As it grew in importance, Fort Laramie quickly became the principal military outpost in the northern plains. The fort was also a transportation and communication hub for the central Rocky Mountain region. Not only immigrant trails, but stage trails, Pony Express, Transcontinental Telegraph, all passed through this post. Fort Laramie hosted several treaty negotiations with the Plains Indian Nations. The most famous of these treaties was the Horse Creek Treaty of 1851 and the Treaty of 1868. However, these treaties were broken when gold was found in the Black Hills, and that led eventually to the massacre at Little Bighorn. This was called Old Bedlam, and it was actually uh, an officer's quarters for bachelors. These are officer quarter ruins. There's not much left of the original building. I guess this was actually for married officers. Not much left of them, though. No interior walls. This is Fort Laramie. It was a major fort on the Oregon Trail. It also was the major fort in the end of the uh, Indian Wars. Like all of the historical military forts, <laughs> they do trumpet calls all regularly all during the day. It's kind of funny. Captain's quarters. This might have been an old refrigerator, actually. It's got the appearance of it. All of these. But, see, it looks like an ice chest. So this is probably an old refrigerator. Let's see if I can open that. Probably an old refrigerator. Fort Laramie, Wyoming. It's a very important place in settling the Indian Wars and also protecting the, uh, the migration on the Oregon Trail. The Oregon Trail went right through here. This is the ruins of the administration building. In front of us, I believe it's the guardhouse. Oh, here's the guardhouse. Let's check it out. Apparently this was the original guardhouse and the surgeon um, complained because it was uh, so unsanitary that <laughs> most of the prisoners ended up having to go to the hospital. So he complained and got his way. 
And that building down there is the uh, newer replacement for the old guardhouse. We'll go check it out in just a second. And here's one of the sales. Ooh, I guess this must have been the solitary confinement of the day. That must have been solitary confinement. It's pretty gruesome. These are remains of ice houses that they had. This is right next to the Laramie River, which is right over there. You can hear it. And they built the ice houses to house ice. They would get the ice in the winter months. And with careful rationing, the ice would last until mm, July, September. It's amazing to me to think of all the people that headed west with all of their belongings and nothing larger than this. It's just really amazing to me to think that they made it. A couple of rocking chairs, maybe a bed, kicking utensils, and that was it. And yeah, they survived. Fort Laramie. Wyoming. One of the key centers in settling the West on the Oregon Trail.